In 2022, a cryptocurrency stealing malware called Pennywise was masquerading as free Bitcoin mining software and being advertised on YouTube. The threat actor created a YouTube channel with over 80 videos to advertise this malware trojan for victims to download via a link in the description. The download tricks the users into disabling their antivirus. While this malware seems relatively novel, it seems to have already gone through multiple iterations. During routine threat hunting, Cybel Research Labs stumbled across this malware and analyzed it. This type of malware trojan designed to steal crypto is called a stealer. After the download, on a Windows computer, a technique called process hollowing is initiated. A loader injects the Pennywise stealer payload into a legitimate .NET binary. The Pennywise stealer has encoded strings that are decoded during the initial execution of malware. The malware then checks to make sure it's not already been installed and running by creating a mutex. It terminates its execution if the mutex is already present. The stealer malware then gets the path of targeted browsers for stealing user data. It targets Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Microsoft Edge browsers. After the browser path is obtained, the malware fetches username, machine name, system language, and time zone details from the victim system. The malware also converts the time zone into Russian Standard Time which suggests the developer and operator are Russia-based. The malware then retrieves the system language code and gets the graphic driver and processor names of the victim's machine using a WMI query and hashes this information. This sounds like a fingerprint, but it is probably related to some other peculiar checks. The malware attempts to identify the system country using the culture info class and terminates its execution if the victim is in Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, or Kazakhstan. This suggests the developers and operators are in one of these countries and fear the local law enforcement. It then checks the dynamic link library files for the presence of a few antivirus and sandbox applications. It also checks the running processes in the victim's machine for processes like Wireshark, Process Hacker, Netstat, TCP View, among others, and terminates if they are detected. It seems the Pennywise developer must fear detection and retaliation from other hackers, cybersecurity professionals, and or law enforcement. After this, the malware decrypts two strings from its payload which likely contain the command and controlled URL and the hacker's username, hence why the malware took those earlier precautions. <laughs> Pennywise then creates a folder to put files of stolen data, before creating 10 threads in memory and executing them. Each thread is responsible for performing a different data theft operation that targets the victim's files, browser's cryptocurrency extension data, browser data including cookies and login credentials. Much of the browser data is encrypted, so it finds the decryption keys that are in another browser folder. The malware also takes screenshots. The stealer appears to have some technical limitations as it only steals files smaller than 20 kilobytes and has RTF, DOC, DOCX, TXT, and JSON extensions, which are saved in the folder. It then finds the cryptocurrency wallets by querying the registry to identify the location of coins. It obtains a path from data in a registry key. It searches the directory for wallet files and copies them before exfiltration. It is capable of stealing from wallets such as Zcash, Armory, Bitcoin, Jax, Exodus, Electrium, Atomic Wallet, Guarda, and Coinomi. It's important to note that ownership of cryptocurrencies is basically just control of private keys in a wallet. The keys are long strings of data. While this is an oversimplification, the process of stealing crypto from wallets on a computer is likely pretty similar to other data theft. It seems to affect what we'll call lukewarm desktop wallets. For example, Exodus states all of your wallet's information is stored locally on your device and that your wallet protects your private keys with heavy encryption. But they also state Exodus is only as secure as the device it is installed on. Similar to how the malware found browser cookies encryption keys, it's likely the malware can find the decryption keys that are associated with the wallet passwords and then decrypt the private keys. The stealer also steals data from cryptocurrency extensions of Chromium-based browsers. It enumerates all files in this folder and checks the local extension settings folder where extension-related data is stored and then finds the crypto browser extension using their extension ID. These extensions increase the wallet attack surface, since many of these extensions integrate with the desktop wallets to exchange, deposit, and stake crypto. This may be another place the malware may find the decryption keys to decrypt the private keys that the wallet stores or gain API access to the wallets. The stealer then compiles the count for harvested data, compresses the folder of stolen data and crypto, then exfiltrates it before deleting the folder.